Why has Steelwool been telling us to remember Jeremy for over five years? Which Jeremy are they talking about? And how does it relate to Cassie, Cassie's dad, and the new story of modern FNAF? In order to figure out who Jeremy is and why we need to remember him, we need to start by asking the question, who do we play as in Help Wanted 2? The two most likely candidates in my opinion are Cassie's dad and Cassie herself. Carney says we look like we have kids, which is a point for Cassie's dad, but Sun calls us a kid. Our default height in the game is also roughly the size of a child. This is most clear when standing next to things at the camera station, where our headlines are pretty much exactly to the point where Cassie's does in Ruin. If Cassie is the player, that could even explain why the Bonnie mask is familiar to her, since Bonnie is her father's favorite character. This honestly works pretty well if we assume that the scooper ending is the true one, but unfortunately there are a few reasons why I don't quite think this is true. In Princess Quest 4, we see our player character and they seem pretty adult-sized. The default height in game is probably for game design purposes. Kid is also a common nickname in the same way that an older man might call a man younger than him Sun or Sunny. If the elevator ending is canon, and I think it probably is, Cassie gets dropped way below the FNAF 6 pizzeria considering where the mimic was in relation to it. Finally, the most damning piece of evidence is that the player gives Roxy the mask we see her wear in Ruin. So in my opinion, the protagonist of Help Wanted 2 has to be Cassie's dad. But that still leaves the question of who he is. We know that his favorite animatronic is Bonnie, he's been a fan of Freddy's for a long time, he's a Fazbear technician, and it seems like by the time of Ruin, he's no longer around. But that's not all. We know the AR world is directly affected by the memories of the person inside it, and it's important to remember that all of the minigames in Help Wanted 2 take place in the AR world, even the ones that you need to take off the mask to access. We know this because after every minigame, you must take off your mask again, even if you took it off to get to that minigame. So it seems to me that the camera station has certain files that Glitchtrap is able to block in the AR world and some he can block in the real world. In that Cassie's dad is going in and out of the AR world to access files he can, and then wears a vanity mask to actually use those files. The point is, whoever Cassie's dad is needs to have access to memories of things like Pizza Simulator and Sister Location. There is only one person who we can say for sure has memories of the places and also has evidence of them still being around, and that's Michael. Now, I made a whole video about how Michael could still be alive, and I'll link that in the description. But I don't think he's Cassie's dad. I think that was almost certainly the original plan, but I don't think it's where Steel Wool ended up going. So where did they end up going? Let's not beat around the bush here. Bonnie Bully being Cassie's dad is an extremely popular theory right now. I was very skeptical of the idea pre-Help Wanted 2, but as of now, I do genuinely think that MatPat was right. But I don't think he got everything nail on the head. I think Cassie's dad is Bonnie Bully, but I also think Cassie's dad is Jeremy the security guard in the FNAF 2 restaurant, and later victim of the Bite of 87. And I even think he's Jeremy the beta tester for Help Wanted 1. Let me elaborate. There's been multiple Jeremys in this franchise, and I think, outside of the MCI victim, they're all one and the same. The security guard Jeremy Fitzgerald worked the night shift in the FNAF 2 restaurant before getting moved over to the day shift and getting his frontal lobe bitten out when one of the animatronics attacked him, causing the infamous bite of 87. I think most people would assume Jeremy Fitzgerald died shortly after this, but not only is that never stated, but it was actually confirmed to not be the case. The security logbook tells us directly that after Jeremy got switched over to the day shift, he felt like he was followed home. He had to have survived the bite. As to how, it could be plot convenience that can't be explained, or even that being binned by one of the two animatronics could have given Jeremy some remnant, either through the soles of the DCI or the refitted withers parts inside the toys. Either way though, we know he lived, so who followed him home? I think it was Michael who, under the alias of Fritz Smith, worked in the night shift directly after Jeremy in the FNAF 2 restaurant. Michael meeting up with his old friend at some point down the line makes sense to me since it's the only way I can think to explain why only the Foxy and Bonnie masks appear in Ruin, and how Michael's room could be in security breach if he did in fact burn and pizzeria him. Let's talk about Michael's room for a second. Assuming Michael did die in FNAF 6, who does this room belong to? It cannot be a replica since not only does it not make sense for Fazbear to build a replica of this room, but it's also hidden behind a secret trap door in one of the employee-only areas of the Pizzaplex. I think this room is where Jeremy operated in secret, post-Pizza Sim. If both Michael and Henry are gone after the Pizza Simulator fire, someone needed to be around to collect that certificate of completion, right? And if we assume he is Cassie's father, then it makes sense why his favorite Freddy show is playing and why his daughter's favorite animatronic poster is on his wall. Jeremy might even be the one who is messing with the Princess Quest arcade machines, and that might have served as his motivation to go down to the FNAF 6 restaurant and find Princess Quest 4. But what about the wall code and Glitchtrap's infection of the Freddy and Friends tapes playing on the TV? 
Well, I don't think this is Jeremy's first interaction with Glitch Hub to begin with. I mentioned earlier that I think Cass's father, Jeremy Fitzgerald the Bonnie Bully, is also Jeremy the beta tester from Help Wanted 1. But how can Cassie's dad be the protagonist of Help Wanted 2 if he cut off his face and died? Well, I don't think he did die. I'm not the first one to bring up the fact that the Halloween mask on the floor Tip Girl mentions could very well be the first Vanny mask. We know it originated from Curse of Dreadbear, and it's possible that Glitch Hub's servant Vanny or GTY used their influence on corporate Fazbear to have it distributed to all Fazbear technicians as a new piece of tech. But what about all the quote-unquote ink in the paper guillotine and tape girl mentions? I actually do think Jeremy cut off the skin from his face as an attempt to remove the vanity mask, but the point isn't whether he did or did not cut off his face, the point is the fact we know he lived. Tape girl directly states that she saw him standing and playing VR after she saw all the ink slash blood on the floor, and if I'm right about the bite of 87 possibly giving Jeremy remnant enough to survive his frontal lobe being bitten off, then him surviving this lines up too. After he was discovered Jeremy used the paper guillotine on himself, he was subsequently fired as a beta tester. But I think he meant to get a job as a Fazbear technician in the Pizzaplex, which was built sometime after Help 101 released. I think Jeremy managed to gain partial control of himself because of his incident with the paper guillotine, which is why he kept tabs on Vanessa and GGY's therapy tapes in his room, knowing they were servants of Glitchtrap. But I also think Jeremy had some issues with memory. Maybe due to Glitch Trap, maybe due to the Bite of 87, but I think there's a reason it's always being said, remember Jeremy. Not just to us as players to remember Jeremy, the character we've known for almost a decade, but also to Jeremy himself, telling him to remember. We're called to retrieve memories in the road to help on the Thu's Vanny ending, and we're constantly being told that things seem familiar to us, so I don't think it's a stretch to say Jeremy has memory issues. If we do want to stretch it though, we could even say Jeremy we needed to be reminded that he was wearing a vanity mask in the first place as we see in Help Wanted 2. And I think those memory issues are what caused Jeremy to write the wall code in his room. I think he wrote that code for himself so that he could remember what he's trying to do here as he battles his failing memory and the mal hair in his brain. He has to save those with soul. But while we don't know who Gregory is or how he got infected with Glitch Trap and then freed or even if he's human or not, we do know he ends up following these instructions one way or another. I don't know how or why, but that is what happens. Back to Cassie's dad though, I think Kennedy Cadet might even be hinting towards him being Jeremy. When I first heard the second story, I thought it might be talking about Vanessa, but I was shown a new perspective on the topic by a fellow content creator and FNAF theorist. During one of our deep and meaningful FNAF discussions, DWFan91, whose channel I'll link in the description, mentioned how Kenny Cadet's story is tend to be about the game he's in. With that understanding in mind, Kenny Cadet's second story applies to Jeremy pretty well. He fell for Glitch Trap's friendly voice and was led astray. He escaped before being locked away in the quote unquote oven, but would have a scar for the rest of his life from the paper guillotine. He entered the forest again, i.e. the Pizza Plex's AR world with the Vanny mask. The young boy that offered guidance could be healthy slash the mimic program, and if the mask by ending is true, then that is the witch finally having its meal. Keep in mind that the genders in Candy Cadet's stories don't always match the real world characters they're about. I do want to quickly say that I mentioned the protagonist of Help Wanted 2 needs memories of places only Michael went to, but I still think it works if Jeremy is the protagonist. If I'm right about Michael following Jeremy and meeting up with him, then he could have explained everything. It's also possible Jeremy worked at Babies, and that's why he has experience with the animatronics Michael never met in that area, like Funtime Chica. For FNAF 6, while Michael was in the office of Pizza Sim, Jeremy could have been handling things in the restaurant like Helvey's medical attention minigame. Despite the fact that the AR world is affected by the memories of the person inside it, and that the AR world affects the real world, I do think these minigames we play in Help 1 or 2 are forms of training scenarios. But Jeremy's memories and experiences, along with the state of the Pizzaplex and the animatronics in it, are affecting what the scenarios are like. And that's why we have minigames with regular Chica, and also minigames with Shattered Chica. That's why we can give Roxy her mask in the AR world, and she actually has it on in the real world. I even think that all these tables and tools left in Ruin are here as a result of Cassie's dad's actions in the AR world. So if Cassie's dad was Jeremy the Bonnie Bully, security guard, beta tester, and Fazbear technician, where is he now? I think a lot of people believe that both Help Wanted 2 endings are canon, but I don't think they are. In Help Wanted 2, we're facing off against the last remaining piece of Glitchtrap's code in the system. One ending has us bring Glitchtrap back into power, and one ending has Glitchtrap completely crushed. These endings have two opposite outcomes, they can't both be true. Let's not forget that in the Vanny ending, when Glitchtrap is crushed, Vanny disappears. And yet we see that Vanny is still active in Ruin. Her graffiti is everywhere, and many animatronics have their scalps carved up to look like rabbit ears. 
In Ruin, the blob is the one that opens the lock gate that leads to the FNAF 6 pizzeria. But if Gregory went down to the Mimic's basement, and Jeremy went down to Pizza Sim's restaurant, someone must have locked that gate after that but before Ruin in order for the blob to open it later. Also, you know, we actually see the mascot ending happen in Ruin. <laughs> And if we peek into the AR world, a mascot looks quite different to other staff bots, and I think the reason for that is it's possessed by Jeremy's soul. After he brought Glitra back to power, he was stuffed inside Mappa and reprogrammed by Vanny to hand out the Vanny mask to create a new reluctant follower, his daughter. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see similar content from me. Bye.